Coming up on HIGMT, how close was Tesla to declaring bankruptcy? Awesome video of Tesla's new Giga presses being assembled, close up of the refresh Model 3, and big progress on Gigafactory Texas. Welcome to How I Got My Tesla, the podcast of Indeterminate Link for Saturday, November 7th, 2020, episode 15 in Ottawa, Ontario. I'm Matt Wilson. Let's start off with a few Tesla things you should know. For the past five financial quarters, Tesla has enjoyed profitability, but it was not always the case. Actually, for Tesla, it was in pretty bad shape financially during the initial Model 3 production run, or production hell, as Elon Musk often refers to this time. So how close was Tesla to bankruptcy? Well, Elon Musk replied to that very question this week, and he said it was actually very close. During the period of time between mid-2017 and mid-2019, Tesla was about a month away from bankruptcy. CNET.com has a short story on this period of time in Tesla's history and where they currently stand in terms of product availability and expansion plans. Thanks to Tesserati.com, we have access to some great video of the assembly of gigapresses that will be used to produce huge castings for the Model Y. Each press weighs in at about 430 tons and will require 24 flatbed trucks just to deliver the required press components. Tesla has ordered 12 of these gigapresses, with one already in operation in Fremont, eight planned in Gigafactory Berlin, and three more in Gigafactory Shanghai. So check out the video just to see how insanely huge these gigapresses are. It's an amazingly complex piece of machinery for sure. CNET's Roadshow page, along with YouTube channel Upcar, has a short video on the 2021 Model 3 changes that have been a point of discussion for many weeks now. The video gives us a close look at many of the refreshments, including front headlights, new wheels, chrome delete, laminated glass, power lift gate, new scroll wheels found on the steering wheel, uh, center console changes, there's a Tesla branded USB thumb drive for recording events from Tesla's Sentry mode, uh, USB type C ports for the rear passengers, along with performance and range increases. Current refreshed Model 3s are being produced out of Tesla's Fremont factory, and Gigafactory Shanghai will soon switch over to the refreshed Model 3, but the exact date have yet to be ironed out. There's an important note regarding the refresh and that all the changes do not affect the overall price of the Model 3. Prices are planned to remain the same despite all of these improvements. Gigafactory Nevada has an overall plan, and that plan was recently made available on websites such as electric.co. Currently, the battery cell production facility is only 30% built out, with Panasonic being the majority occupier of the current building. Panasonic currently has 13 battery cell assembly lines running 24-7 and is producing over 35 gigawatt hours of battery cells per year, which is about one-third the total planned output for this facility when it's fully constructed. Now for me, I think this is pretty smart of Tesla to only build what is currently required for battery cell production and gives Tesla an advantage to not only increase battery cell production by expanding their current facility, but to actually introduce new manufacturing processes with their new 4680 cells without affecting current production lines. Tesserati.com has a few articles regarding Gigafactory Texas, with the first being the expected 15,000 jobs being created. The 15,000 jobs consists of the initial 5,000 at the plant and then another 4,000 for the construction of the plant and another 9,000 in spin-offs jobs that rely on Gigafactory Texas but are not tied directly to Tesla. Suppliers to Tesla would make up the majority of the 9,000 spin-off jobs along with positions in the service industry that were not present prior to Tesla breaking ground in Austin. Elon Musk recently tweeted about the progress of Gigafactory Texas, indicating that they are making great progress on the site. The primary function of Gigafactory Texas is for the production of the Cybertruck, which is planned to have limited release by the end of 2021 and full-on production at the start of 2022. Elon also mentioned the final changes to the Cybertruck are currently underway and should be released by the end of this year. Now, I wonder just how much influence the recently announced GMC Hummer EV will have on the Cybertruck. Uh, prior to the Hummer's announcements, I was thinking, boy, I wonder if there is a way that Tesla would maybe put in four-wheel steering to make the truck a little bit more maneuverable in tight spaces. And uh, wouldn't you know it is... GM uh, announced that their Hummer EV will actually have four-wheel steering and will actually have, um, what did they call it, uh, tank steering, where one of the wheels uh, in the back would lock up 
to help pivot the entire uh, pickup truck around certain obstacles. So um, it'll be very interesting to see if the revised Cybertruck uh, is going to incorporate some of the ideas uh, brought forward by GM. I don't know. Uh, the whole four-wheel steering thing, I think it's really niche. Um, I don't... Kn- I'm- I think if a pickup truck needed to have four-wheel steering, they would have had it by now. Uh, Four-wheel steering has been in passenger vehicles uh, for quite some time now. I think uh, Honda had uh, an Accord with four-wheel steering uh, back in the late 90s. Um, But I think a lot of automotive uh, manufacturers have, like, (laughs) pardon for the... (laughs) We've got a pun here. Had steered away from using four-wheel steering just because... um, I don't know the 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 juice is the juice might not be worth the squeeze. It adds another layer of complexity to the back end of the truck, and I'm not exactly sure if um, the drivers of the Tesla Cyber Truck are actually this is something that they're really looking to get out of Tesla. So I'm not sure if this is actually going to happen, but we'll see what the design changes uh, come out with when uh, when Tesla announce it towards the end of this year. So while we're talking about Gigafactory Texas, we might as well take a look at Jeff Roberts and his daily drone footage. There are more exposed excavations for column footings for buildings one and two, with the majority being already poured. Progress continues in the lower level of building three with large structures currently being worked on, probably for stamping presses or Giga presses that are similar to those being installed in Gigafactory Berlin. Uh, it appears to be a possible storm pond that's already been excavated and graded to the south of the uh, to the south portion of the Megapad area, but there's still no sign of any underground infrastructure being installed or even delivered on site. There is a second mobile crane that has been delivered and is currently being assembled on site, and it looks relatively new or even recently refurbished. And seeing that this is episode 15, I might as well give you local EV stats on the five. Uh, we've got 12,000 kilometers have been driven since mid July? I think that's when I started keeping track. Anyways, uh, of the 12,000 kilometers being driven, I've seen 430 Teslas and 232 other EVs uh, from all other manufacturers combined. Now, of the 430 Teslas, um, 293 were Model 3s, 76 were Model S's, 33 were Model X's, and 28 Model Y's. Of the other EVs that I've seen uh, while I was driving, uh, I've seen 115 Nissan Leafs being the most popular outside of Tesla. And the most rare uh, EV that I've seen was actually one uh, Jaguar I-Pace. Um, I saw that, I think, over at Ikea once. And uh, I had to do a double take. I was like, wait, what's that? Oh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an I-Pace. Okay, good. So I had to make note of that. So... Uh, so those are the stats so far. So like I said, I'll probably repeat this on the five. So the next update will happen in episode 25, it seems like. All right. So that should pretty much do it for episode 15. Uh, for listeners who are looking to purchase a new Tesla and are looking for a referral program code, uh, you can feel free to use mine at ts.la slash Matthew 40942. And that'll get you 1000 free supercharging miles. Uh, I'll include that link in the show notes below. And let's see, an overall hashtag for this episode. Uh, Let's try hashtag Tesla Press. And the overall hashtag for this podcast is hashtag H-I-G-M-T. And if you have any emails for me, feel free to throw me an email at howigotmytesla at gmail.com. And you can always watch my progress towards a Tesla by visiting howigotmytesla.com. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram by simply searching for how I got my Tesla. That's right. So thank you for listening. Uh, This podcast is produced by Matt Wilson and hosted by Squarespace. Music for this episode is Cascade by Cubby. (laughs) 